All right. So today we're just going to review or go over um, a hypothesis test from chapter 10. So I just want you guys to keep in mind when we're looking at hypothesis tests for me, I want to use a full test process, meaning those five steps. Um, so you're identifying and pulling all that information out and you really understand and know what's going on. So this example is a study in 2011 found that the average cell phone call length to be 1.78 minutes. A researcher believes this to be lower now. A random sample of oops, 82 cell phone calls found the average cell phone call length to be 1.65 minutes and the standard deviation of that sample to be 0.35 minutes. So using a 5% level of significance, complete the full test process. So every time I ask you for a hypothesis test, I always want that full test process. I don't want a partial. The only time I would ask for a partial is if I give you the problem and then I say, well, I started the problem for you and I have the full test process and I filled in some of the blanks. That would be the only time. So we would always show a full test process. And if I happen to do some of it for you, that would be one situation. But normally this would be the problem. And then you have a blank page and you'll complete the test. No, no other prompts from me other than saying using a 5% level of significance to complete that full test process. Okay. So you know what I do is I use this sample, so right here, it says a random sample of 82 cell phone calls found the mean to be 1.65 in the standard deviation of 0.35. So right there, that sample piece is what I use for my population. And remember, it's not the 82 cell phone calls, it's all of them, right? So let's start right here, their population step. And under a population step, I need to identify the objects. Then I'll move on to the variable unknown in the goal. So my objects here, this is what we're studying or who we're studying, I should really say. And a lot of times it's people, right? And in this case, it's not. So you look here, it says a random sample of 82 and whatever it is, that's who we're studying, cell phone calls. So right here, the objects are all cell phone calls. That's who we're studying. Now, the variable is what we're studying about those cell phone calls. So it's what's changing from call to call. And right here, it says that we found that the calls have a mean, and I didn't really put it into words. So now I have to go up here and kind of read, well, what is it? Okay, so up here, we found that the average cell phone call length. 
So it's the call length and it appears to be in minutes, right? So you can be a little bit more specific, but you don't have to be if you don't want here. So right here, you could just say call length. And then you can add in minutes if you want. You don't have to put that. But then I also want to mention that if this is categorical or numerical, so the length of anything is a meaningful number, it's numerical. There's other things pointing to this being numerical. It gives me an X bar, that's a sample mean, that's numerical, right? I don't get X bar for categorical. S is the sample standard deviation. I only have that for numerical. So I have multiple things pointing to the direction of a numerical variable here. Okay. What's before, oh, found. Oh, that's a D, found, there you go. So in the sample, we found the sample mean to be one six five. My unknown here, so my unknown is only one of two things, right? It's either P for my categorical data or mu for my numerical data, right? It's numerical, we already stated that here, so it's mu. And now I want to define mu. So I always start it the same way. Mu is the population mean. And now I'm going to take the objects and variable and put them together. So for numerical, I write the variable first and the object second, usually. And for categorical, I switch the order. It just, for me, when I write it, it makes more sense that way, like it reads nicely. Write it however you want, right? So it's the population mean, it's the average call length of the cell phone calls. That's what we're studying, right? So mu is the population mean. So it means, it, I'm talking about it's the average call length of all cell phone calls, not just the 82, all of them. So that's what we're saying when we say population. So I'm just going to say it's population mean cell phone call length. See here, I, I switched it around. I just told you I was going to do it the other way and I switched it around. It's, it doesn't matter how you write it. It's like I typically write variable than objects, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like I could have said mu is population mean call length of all cell phone calls. Right, so you could write it whichever way makes sense to you. And now my goal, remember my goal is always to support my HA. I don't know my HA yet. I'm gonna come back to that. I do this a lot of times. I want you to know you can skip it for right now and then come back to it after you do your method step, but you don't have to. I'm gonna leave some space. I'm gonna jump down to my method step. As you do more and more of these, you don't have to do it this way. But sometimes I think it's a little easier for some people. So I have my null and my alternative. And I'm going to write my alternative first. So my alternative, I have to go back and look at my problem up here. So it says a study in 2011 found that the average call length is 1.78 minutes. A researcher believes this is to be lower, lower. So it's less than. That's what we're trying to show. So we're trying to show that mu is less than 1.78. So that means my null is mu is greater than or equal to 1.78, or you know you can write it as mu equals 1.78. So there's my null, my alternative. Now I'm going to write my goal here in a minute when I'm done with this method step, and it's going to be this, the alternative, just out in words. My alpha was given to me. That's my level of significance. It's 5% or 0 0.05. And here I'm studying numerical data. So it's the T-curve or T-test statistic. And I'm just going to mention I have degrees of freedom, which is equal to N minus 1 for this problem. So now I'm done with my method step, which is pretty quick. I want to go back up to my goal. My goal is to show support for HA, okay? I want to be able to say that this is true. So I'm just going to say, to say that, and I'm going to put this into words. It's easy to do it because it's already in words right here, right? So the population, 
mean cell phone call length is less than 1.78 minutes. Okay, that's my goal. I'm just taking the symbols and putting it into words. Everyone good with that? Any questions on those first two steps? All right. Now we'll go on to the third step, which is my sample step. This is kind of like my quick, easy, like a little break step. <clears throat> my sample step. So I need to go back to my problem and see what I have here. So for my sample, remember this is numerical. So I'm going to look for X bar, S, N, and then I'll check for normality. So I just say normal, like with a question mark, is this normal? So I'm just gonna pull all the information out. X bar is 1.65, S is 0.35, and N is the 82. Now normal, I always use um, N is greater than or equal to 30 if I can. So N is greater than or equal to 30. I'm just gonna put a check mark, yes normal right so it is normal because this works out right if it doesn't work out and i have raw data i will draw my npp right using my technology and if it looks fairly linear then i can say the npp is linear so yes normal <clears throat> that would be the other way for numerical okay so now i'm going to work on my results step so remember the results, I'm comparing my sample here, right? I'm going to take a look at where my sample stands compared to the null, that 1.78. That's what I'm looking for. So I could do this a couple different ways, right? So I can use, I could do this kind of out by hand. I can use my technology. So there's a couple different things I can do here. So um, whatever way you choose, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to show you the by hand. So I have my T test statistic, and that's equal to X bar minus mu naught divided by S divided by the square root of N. So my X bar is the 1.65. Remember mu naught is from my null, that's the 1.78. S is the 0.35 and my square root of N, square root of 82. So when I subtract and divide, I get negative 3.3634. Now, if you plug this into your calculator and you got your test statistic, you should get that same number. Or if you use Minitab, you should still get that same number. I want to interpret that. And then I want to calculate the p-value. And I want to interpret that. So my interpretation here is I just want to talk about how far my X bar is from the center. And the center is U naught. So I'm just going to say my X bar is 3.3634. It's the absolute value. So I wrote it as a positive number. Standard errors, and since it was negative, I'm going to say below the center which is the 1.78. Maybe I'll just put in parentheses center so you guys remember that is the center of my curve. Okay. So now when I'm calculating my p-value, I'm just gonna sketch it out because I like to have this visual, right? I'm looking down here at negative 3.3634. I'm calculating this area in my tails. It helps you when you're when you're plugging things in, right? So for my p-value, I'm looking at the probability that a t is less than negative 3.3634. So here I'm using t CDF in my calculator. I'm going to use negative infinity up to the negative 3.3634. I'm not going to round too much yet. And my degrees of freedom is 81 because it's n minus one, so 82 minus one. 
So for my p-value, I get a number of 0 0.00059. You can write it exactly, or you could say very small. If you said very small, I would agree. That is very small. So now I want to interpret this. So I'm just going to say, well, if the population mean, remember because it's numerical, is that center, so is the 1.78, there is a very small probability of getting a sample mean at least as extreme as the one we got from sampling. So all this is saying is I have a very small probability of getting a second sample that far away when the center is 1.78, okay? That's my result. You could have easily plugged this information into your calculator and got your T and your peak very quickly, another way. I like to show it all different ways because I'm well, you're welcome to do it different ways, right? You, you're welcome to calculate it out more like by hand like this, or you're welcome to use your technology. Not picky about which way. Sorry, I'm moving them, trying to, trying to move it up a little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our conclusion. Anyone have questions on that? these two steps, the sample and the result step, before I move on. No questions? Okay. So let's take a look at the conclusion. So the first thing is I'm going to ask, is the p-value less than or equal to alpha? So what I'm saying here is very small, less than or equal to 0.05. And that question is yes, right? The answer is to that question. Yes, very small is less than 5%. So I am going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So now I'm going to write my conclusion statement. So at the 5% level of significance, we can conclude that, now I'm going, going to go right back up here, if I can find it, to my population, I'm going to write my goal. We can conclude that the population mean cell phone call length is less than 1.78 minutes. And that's our conclusion. Our conclusion is if we can or cannot conclude that, right? Did our sample support it? And it did. When we say yes here, it means our sample did support. So when I say yes, I can reject, it's positive here. So it's all positives or all negatives. Yes, I can reject, we can conclude that, that the HA is true. If you answered no up here, it'd be no, you cannot reject. We cannot conclude that the HA is right. And that's my conclusion. Now as a follow-up, we don't ever add this automatically, but just as, I'm just gonna say, plus as a follow-up question, not anything we add automatically. If an error occurs, which we don't know, what type could it be? So remember for error, if you reject the null, it's always type one, okay? So the answer would be type one error could occur, okay? And this is because, or 
ever since we rejected the null. And that's why it's the type one error. So remember, it's not that a type one error has occurred. There's a possibility that a type one error could occur. And we never just add it onto the hypothesis test. You wait for a question, right? So it's always separate. And it's something that you might be asked. You're not always asked, but you might be asked. And there it is.